in this chapter we will discuss about markov analysis by the end of this chapter you should be able to find out what will be the future states or conditions by using markov analysis and what about what is called as steady state conditions and we'll also discuss about observing states and non observing states so let us discuss this chapter in detail now markov analysis it actually deals with the probability of future occurrences so we know some probability now about the current known state and we want to find out what is the probability of something in the future this can be applied for plenty of uh, computing as well as business and other problems like other applications the first condition you need to know is this the system starts in an initial state or a condition so you need to know the current state or the initial state and the probability of changing from one state to another is called as matrix of transition probabilities so here in the case of markov analysis we will use matrix multiplication multiplicate multiplication and others so the discussion about macro markov problems here are limited to these four assumptions number 1 the number of possible states is finite you know what are the states now and they are finite they are not infinite states number 2 if you have to change from one state to another it is same that probability of going from one state to another remains the same over time it will not change this value does not change and we can always predict your future state based on the current state and the matrix of transition probabilities point number 4 the size and the makeup of the system do not change while you are doing your analysis so let's start what do you mean by states like state mean it is a way by which you can indicate your current condition or any other condition of your system or of any of your situations in the system like or in the process markov analysis it makes an assumption that all the states given to you are collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive the next step you got to do is to identify the probability of being in a state of the system to be in a single state or a state so information is placed in what is called as vector of state probability so you represent it like this phi of i which is the period i is equal to phi 1 pi 2 pi 3 until pi n there are n states here so you will say what is the probability of being in state 1 this is pi 1 state 2 is pi 2 until state n in some cases you know with certainty that you are in a specific state in that scenario you can say phi of 1 which is period number 1 is 1 comma 0 so you are exactly in the first state and the probability of being in the second state is zero it's not possible this is certain that you are in the first state so that's why we represent phi of 1 equal to 1 comma 0 but in most of the cases you will have more than one item you will have more than one states to discuss about let's take an example here is a three grocery stores example okay here what they have is this the grocery store is approached by or it has 100000 customers during a month 40000 of them will go to what is called american food store 30000 goes to food mart and another 30000 goes to atlas foods so we can say the people who are going to american food store that is state 1 american food store is state 1 food mart is state 2 atlas foods is state 3 So now let us represent the probability of the initial probability, which is represented using vector of state probabilities. Out of hundred thousand people, forty k, forty thousand reach to American food store. So forty thousand by hundred thousand gives you point four zero. Similar, you can do for food mart as well as Atlas Foods. So phi of one in the period number one, our state is point four, point three, point three. Point four is the probability by which a person will shop at state one, which is American food shop. Point three is the probability by which a person will shop at food mart, which is the state two, and the third one as well. Next is you got to represent the probability of vector states um, to indicate. First, now we have represented actually the current state. Okay, this represents the market share already. Point four, point three, point three. the management is actually interested to know what will happen in the future whether a customer will remain to the same store go to the same store next month or maybe is going to go to a different store this is represented in using various probabilities here so if you if the person who is shopping at american food store which is state number 1 goes to the same shop next next month 
So that probability is 80% of the customers who are purchased in the American food store, which is state one this semester, will purchase in the same place. 10% will go to the others. Okay, 10% will go to the food mart and 10% will go to Atlas Food. So you can see the probability changes 0.4 into 0.8 or you will get 0.32. Similar 0.4 into 0.1. So the people who go from American food store to food mart is represented by 0.04 as a probability. Similar for the Atlas Foods as well. And you got to do for others also. People who shopped at Food Mart this month, will they move to uh, the American Food Store or will they maintain the Food Mart or they will move to Atlas Foods? So these things can be represented using this. So actually these things are represented in the format of a matrix. It is called matrix of transition probabilities. This indicates how you will transit from one state to another. Okay. And if you want to do for many months, then you will have a huge list of probabilities available for you. So we represent them in one single matrix and continue on further. So Pij is a conditional probability of being in state J. In the future, given you are in the current state is I. So you go from I to J. Let's say if I say P12, then it means you are in state 1 now, you are going to state 2 in the future, which is the next state. So, matrix of transition probabilities is represented like this, P equal to P11, P12, P13 until P1n, similar from 2 1 to 2n and M1 to Mn. Here, the sum of probability of each row should be equal to 1. So, let's take the same example with the grocery shop. So, P11 is 0.8, meaning the person who shopped at uh, state 1, which is American food, will remind to the same shop, will go to the same shop next month, which is 80%, so you represent it as 0.8. The person who shopped at uh, American food store this month and he will go to the next two, state two, not in the same shop, that is 0 0.1, which is 10%. Similar, the third case is also 10%, so you represent it as 0 0.1. So you represent each one here. All the transition probabilities are represented in P. So P21 going from state two to state one uh, in the next period, P22 maintaining to the same place in the second period also, two, three from two to three and so on and so forth. So now what you are going to do using Markov analysis, we want to predict the future. We know what is called as a vector of state probability, which is the current probabilities. And we also know matrix of transition probability. Using these two, you can identify the probability of being in a state in the future, in the next month or the month after. So you are going to use this in the calculations now. Okay, so this probability will help you to determine how much will be the market share. So to do it, to, de to predict the future, here is the equations to go through. If you want to find for the next period, you can say phi of 1 equal to phi of 0 into p. So if you are, let's say you are in the nth state now, phi of n, you want to find n plus 1 period of next period, phi of n plus 1 equal to phi of n into p. So we can calculate like this, phi of 1 equal to phi of 0 into p. So 0 is the initial state, let's say 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And you have the matrix, which is you know, the state of uh, transmission matrix, uh, transition matrix. So you just multiply 0.4 into 0 0.8, 0 0.3 into 1, 0 0.3 into 2, add them up. So you get the value. So the next state you will be in this, this is the probability of being in uh, the state 1, state 2, state 3 in, in the next period. So if you want to find the next level, the next one, you can do that also, phi of 2 equal to phi of 1 to p. And you can continue like this uh, for the future. So if here, if you watch out, Initially, it was 0.4 and the state 1 is increasing. State 2 is also increasing, but the state 3 probability is decreasing. So the customers going to the third market, which is Atlas Food, decreases. The other two supermarkets get increased. So you can do it like this, phi 1 equal to phi 0 p. If you calculate phi 2 equal to phi 1 p, you can represent it like it's equal to pi 0 into p square. So actually pi of n equal to pi of 0 into p power n. So you have to watch out. If you keep continuing, does that mean everybody will go to the American and the food market, a uh, food mart and the food, uh, the Atlas one will not have anybody? What will happen? So what happens is this. It will keep continuing. It will change up to some extent. Then it will come to an equilibrium state or the steady state condition. After that, there will be no change in the probability. So how to figure out? Okay. So here we are taking an example of uh, Toxie Works Company. Over the past two years, 80% of the time, milling machines which work correctly this month will also function next month. Okay. So what worked before will work properly now, 80% of them. 90% of the time, 
the machine which remained incorrectly adjusted if it has been incorrectly adjusted in the previous month. If the previous month it had some problems, it is expected that this month also it will have some problems. Okay, 10%, what happens in the previous month it has some problems, but this month it will not have problems. So you have to represent them in uh, transition probabilities. 0.8, if it works better, it will work better now. 0.2, if it worked better, it will not work better this month. 0.1, if it does not work previous time better, this, um, this month it will work better. And 0.9, if it does not work previously properly, incorrectly it worked, now also it will be incorrect. Remember, sum of probabilities of the rows will be equal to 1. Okay. So, these are the different states, P11, P12, P21, P22. So, P11, P12, P21, P22. So, you can calculate if you want to find um, uh, phi of 1, which is for the next month, let's say. You know, initially the system is working fine. Let's say this is our assumption. It's working fine. So, it's functioning correctly. Phi of 0 is 1 comma 0. Multiply by the P, you will get the answer. And if let's say you want to find the next month, pi 2 equal to pi 1 into P. Take the pi 1 value, multiply it with P, you get the value. Right. Now, let us discuss. Is it that in any share, one thing will become 0, other thing will become 1? But that's not the case. There is what is called equilibrium share. This is also called a steady state or equilibrium probabilities. What happens is this. When an equilibrium state comes into picture or equilibrium condition exists, state probability does not change after a large number of periods. It does not change. It will maintain. The probabilities of the current period will be equal to the probabilities of the next period. So next period will be equal to the current period. So if you want to do it, you can continue doing for many periods like this. You can do for the first period of the state probability, for the second one, third one, fourth one. So this is done for the given problem, the current problem. If you see, we started with 1 comma 0. Okay, initially is 1 comma 0 and the Tolsky, Tolsky works, it becomes 0 0.8, 0 0.2 and it keeps changing down, you can see it keeps going all the way down. Okay, so if there is an equilibrium condition, then the probability will not change after quite long number of periods. So if you want to do it, pi of n, um, n plus 1 equal to pi of n into p. This is our normal representation, right? But at equilibrium, pi of n plus 1 will be equal to pi of n, they will be the same. So the next state will be equal to the current state. So you can represent like this pi of n plus 1 equal to pi of n which is a representation so pi equal to pi p it's the same thing. So if you want to calculate you can represent it like this pi equal to pi p which is pi 1 comma pi 2 there are only two states so pi 1 pi 2 they will remain like pi 1 pi 2 into p so you can multiply inside you can multiply like this pi 1 equal to pi 1 into 0.8 plus 0.1 into pi 2 similar you can make two equations here okay. When you come up with these two equations, also we know one more thing, sum of all probability should be equal to 1. So here we have only two probability, pi 1 and pi 2. So if you add pi 1 plus pi 2, you go to 1. So we have now three equations. The first two is this two and the third one is pi 1 plus pi 2 equal to 1. So you can replace um, any one in the other equation. Let's say we take these two, pi 2 equal to 0 0.251 plus 0.9 pi 2 and then we take pi 1 equal to, pi 1 plus pi 2 equal to 1. So you can replace, um, you can replace every uh, pi 2 by pi 1 and you can get the values, okay. You can calculate them, you will get the answers easily here, okay. You can calculate and you can find the answer. So that is pretty simple, you can find what is pi 1 in the steady state probability, what is pi 1, what is pi 2, okay. So this will be the value, after that it will not change, it will maintain its value at that spot. That is what is called absorbing state. What is absorbing state? You end up in a state, after that you will not go anywhere, you will stop there. So this is called absorbing state. For this, we are taking an example now. So um, let's say there are four states. One is called uh, somebody has paid everything. All the bills have been paid. Number two, he is in bad debt. There are, uh, he is in, you know, for the past three months or more, he has not paid, overdue. Next is state three, which is overdue less than one month. The other one, state four, overdue between one to three months. So these are the four typical states you can have. So the representation, which is the matrix of transition probabilities is given to you. So you have paid, everything is paid, bad debt, which means more than three months, you have not paid, less than one month, you have not paid, and one to three months, you have not paid. So this is the representation. Now, same here, paid, bad debt, um, less than a month, and one to three months. So if you see, this is called P, which is the matrix of transition probabilities. So um, the point is this, if you, uh, if you continue on this, okay, you will either end up in paid state or you will end up in what is called bad debt state. These are the two states which are called as absorbing states. 
you will either end up in pain or bad luck. So this will be the case you will be. So in, in, in this case, we want to know how much of the money, okay, that you will be in the paid case and how much of the money you will be in the bad debt state. You want to manage your amount, okay. For this purpose, we use what is called fundamental matrix. What is fundamental matrix? Let us discuss this now. Your P matrix, which is the matrix of transition probabilities, is divided into four points. First two is this part is I, which is the identity matrix. And this is a zero matrix, which is all zeros there. Then we have what is called A matrix and B matrix. So if you want to find F, which is a fundamental matrix, you can calculate it like this. F equal to I minus B inverse. So I is um, identity matrix. B, you can get it from the lower right column of your P matrix. And you get the value. So if you want to find F, which is inverse of this, you know, a matrix inverse, um, A, B, C, D, you want to find the inverse, you put minus one on the top. It is, you, you just swap these two, D and A. And the others get negative values, okay? D by R, B minus B by R, minus C by R, A by R. So R is equal to AD minus BC. So you have to calculate AD minus BC, okay? Multiply the values. So remember, this is A, first location is A, second is B, third is C, fourth one is D, right? So just use them, calculate the values, and you get the answer here. Now, if you, you have the fundamental matrix, matrix, now you want to know what will be my probability of ending up in the bad state or ending up in the paid state, what is the chances of that? So this is done using multiplying F, which is a fundamental matrix by A, okay? You will get FA. So let us apply. The FA has some indications here. What it indicates is this, probability that an amount in one of the non-absorbing states will end up in an absorbing state. So you will start with non-absorbing, but you will end up in an absorbing state. What's the probability? For example, in here, in this representation, in the FA, the first row indicates a probability that an amount in less than one month, okay, less than one month, will end up in paid and bad category, bad debt. So this is for less than one month, okay, less than one month row here. You end up in paid or you end up in bad debt. The second one, what happens here, you, uh, you know, probability that the second row indicates that otherwise you are in bad, you are in debt between one to three months. Either you end up in paid or you end up in bad debt. So simply, uh, the probability that the person who is in one month, less than one month um, payment, have to pay overdue of less than one month, will end up in paid is 0.97. Okay, will end up in bad debt is 0 0.03. So this could be represented. So we can use MA matrix FA uh, to answer uh, many questions like whether how much you will end up in paid back case, how much you will have paid, how much you will be in bad debt and so on and so forth. So you can represent what is called M. M is the amount of money that is in each of the non-absorbing states. So M is equal to M1, M2, M3, M till Mn. These are the non-absorbing state, not the absorbing state. So let's say we will start like this. You have, let's assume you have $2,000 in less than one month category and 5,000 in one to three months category. What will, end, what will end up? Finally, you will pay out of 7,000 in total, you will pay 6,240, you would have paid, and 760 will be in the bad debt, which you have not uh, paid, okay? Bad debt means more than three months. So this ends our representation of Markov analysis.